G'day everyone and welcome to the February 2024 edition of Australian Model Railway News. We're going to go through all the news announcements and updates that have happened throughout the month of February. As well as that, don't forget to stay through to the end so you can find out all about the upcoming exhibitions, conventions and open days happening throughout this year and next. Australian Model Railway News and other videos on this channel are made possible by the Patreons on Patreon. And welcome to the new members this month. And if you are interested in joining the community, there is more information in the description below. As well as the Scale Model Supply, who make excellent paint and modelling accessories. The news is also supported by Trackside Models, who produce high quality buildings and accessories in scale format at reasonable prices. The news also welcomes new sponsor, Hearns Hobbies, located in the heart of Melbourne at Flinders Street Railway Station. They have, of course, model railways and all your modelling accessories as well as the Easter Model Train Show at Diamond Creek, happening over the Easter long weekend in Melbourne. As well as that, the Australian Model Railway Association Victoria Branches Exhibition happening in the first weekend of August at the showgrounds in Melbourne, with more details coming soon. And of course, if you are new here, don't forget to be subscribed so you can keep up to date with all the videos that I have coming out frequently. Now, this episode is going to be a gangbuster, so I hope you enjoy. This month, we're gonna kick off with another new product or products from modelbox.com.au. Starting with an N-gauge box, as well as an extra wide box. The N-scale box has two outer rows cut to full depth, which can be used for extra high rolling stock, double stack container cars, or crane cars. The extra wide has slightly wider rows to suit US rolling stock. The extra wide boxes come in both vertical and horizontal orientations and is produced with long lasting PU sponge foam selected to provide the maximum support with rows at 39 millimeters. Wide rows is the standard 37 and these have been selected to make sure the wide US rolling stock, crane cars and box cars. And they only recommend these boxes if you know that your rolling stock is wide. And the box has the same physical dimensions as the previous release, which is 62 by 35 by six centimeters and they're priced at $60 each. The N-Scale box has the same physical dimensions. As well as that, each box contains eight 19mm wide and 30mm deep slots for general N-Scale modelers, and two slots, 21mm wide and 50mm deep for your extra large models like double stack car wagons or derailment cranes, and these are also priced at $60. These come in vertical or horizontal, and if you are after a few of them, you can get a pack of five for $250, which comes with free postage. Now they also have a new locomotive cradle, which is professionally CNC precision cut to an original custom design. The cradle provides the ability for you to work on your HO or 00 scale models in three planes, top and bottom, side and at 30 degrees, perfect for painting or applying decals to the side. The overall length is 400mm wide and is long enough for you to comfortably work on your longest coach, with the 230mm depth creating a large enough surface to prevent the cradle from sliding on your desk. The repair cradles are priced at $45, including postage anywhere in Australia. Lastly, they also have two new lamps, which I guess might be of primary interest to Queenslanders, but they do have a number on the way which will be of a bit more universal interest. These lamps are priced at $49.90 delivered Australia-wide. Our friends at Trackside Models have a new kit being released in March, and it should be here for the Diamond Creek exhibition here in Melbourne. Now they've got a hardware retail store in both HO and N scale, and both are laser cut to a very high grade, and are a flat pack kit, which of course include the instructions, and they are all locally made right here in Australia. The building complements many of the other buildings in the trackside range, all of which can be found on their website. The HO scale kit comes in at $45.95, and for N scale at $34.95. The Train Girl has a set of new signs available. There are Australian ghost signs available in HO and N scale. These are right to cut, peel and stick straight on your model, and they're really suitable for brick style buildings, adding an instant bit of Aussie history and street appeal to any building. Currently, these feature bushels, Arnott's Biscuits, Rosella, Nestle, Cotties, Cohen and Peters. These are now retailing at $6.95 and they're available directly from her website which will be linked in the description below, along with everything else that I mentioned. And just to make note, you will have to open that on a phone or on a computer. And of course, while you're there, make sure you're subscribed. Following along from last month's announcement from Ixion Models, they have confirmed and updated a few things regarding the Victorian Railways A2, with the first early CAD drawings have been received, representing the preserved engine A2986. However, they've said that we should see a final CAD drawing soon, with the 3D design work to be completed and tooling has commenced 
by the time that this video has come out. The early Stevenson Valve Gear A2 and those without smoke deflectors are not being produced. The production model will have all Walshot's valve gear. Available variants will include spoke or box pop driving wheels, coal and oil burners, and rod or plate cow catchers, which are interchangeable. These will be included in the box. As well as that, they will also be doing the tender that is unique to A2986. There will also be a completely new loco to tender connection, which will be a simple push to click coupling will also carry the electrical connections. In a first for Ixion, the A2 locomotives will be available as a DC model or with factory fitted DCC sound. All locomotives will be fitted with two sugar cube speakers as standard. The DC locos will have a DCC ready chip socket installed in the tender. Mark Jessa is back again with another N scale shipping container. In this release, it's the Kent Removals 20-foot shipping container. These, like the others that he's released, feature pad printing and an internal magnet, and are priced at $15 and are now available on his website. And looking at his previous releases, they all seem to have been very popular. So if you are after one or several, probably check it out now. He also has a little teaser on the website saying that there is going to be another container released in early March. Walker Models have released a new kit. Picton Station in HO scale. Picton is a small town in the MacArthur region of New South Wales, southwest of Sydney. This model is timber with 3D printed windows and doors and other parts to add great detail to this model. It sits on a baseboard measuring 272 by 136 mil and is priced at $105 and is available now on their website. Scale Model Co in Sydney have released several new kits. The Oz Kits HO Scale Bedford TK New South Wales Bushfire Brigade Truck Kit priced at $35.95, as well as three model kits of a Bobcat, Skid Steer, Car and Transport Trailer, and a combined Bobcat Trailer, starting from $18.95. They also have the Bedford TK Tabletop priced at $35.95, and they are available on their website or in-store now. And lastly, they did add a teaser for a coming Oz Kits HO Echo Fire Truck Engine Kit, including decals. Gopher Models have released their much-anticipated N-Scale Victorian Railways B-Class. These are DC ready to run straight out of the box, although they are DCC ready with a six-pin plug. Now, some notes have been made on each model, those being that with the V-Line Orange, you do need to say when you're ordering whether you want teacup or V-Line Scheme, as they do have different decals for each. The V-Line Scheme only has one number available, B84 but the teacup scheme has nine different numbers. For the V-Line Orange and Grey, there is a choice of 11 numbers, which is the whole roster of the V-Line scheme. And the numbers are in decal form, so you can choose which numbers you want. For SSR Yellow, they're running a promotion with the SSR B, priced at $280. When you purchase an SSR B, you can also purchase the SSR 44 class for $220, saving you 60 bucks. But this only applies with the purchase of an SSR B. For the West Coast Railways B, B61 has been done, but there is a decal in there for B76, which can be placed over the number on the loco. So if you want to, you can have them. So if you are after one, they're now available on their website, priced at $280 each. But if you are after a DCC and sound fitted model, keep an eye on Buck and Bull Models, who will have them soon. A new model railway manufacturer has appeared, JH Models, who have announced the upcoming release of their first locomotive kit the Queensland Railway's C-17 steam locomotive. Development of this kit is a joint project with Cane Toad Flats over the last few years. The kit represents the later 1938 Brown Bomber style C-17 with sedan cab and roller bearing tender and bogies covering running numbers from 961 to 1000. And this will be available in HON 3.5 12mm gauge only. The price is yet to be confirmed, but they should have it by late March. At this stage, they will only be offered as kits, with no ready-to-run models. And if you do want more information on these, you can get in touch with them via Facebook or email. IDR Models has given us another general update. The factory is now on holiday for Chinese New Year, but they have been sent photos of the NN production before they closed. All the NN parts are painted, with most parts pad printed, and assembly will start soon, or once they return from holidays. They were hoping to have these NNs ready for the Diamond Creek exhibition, but unfortunately they will not be ready for that weekend. The shipment will hopefully arrive for the Rose Hill Show in Sydney in early May. Adding to this, they said that the Queensland SX coaches are progressing slowly. The release of the tooling took longer than expected, and the factory is to start injecting the bodies and parts on their return to work. The artwork is not completely finished yet, and one issue is identifying what SX cars made it on a trip to Western Australia in the 1980s. 
and they've asked if anyone has photos or information about these SX cars in Western Australia, if they could please get in touch with them directly. Lastly, the second run of New South Wales BBW ballast wagons are now in stock at IDR Models websites, as well as at Kizula Hobbies and Australian Modeler. These are packs 13 through 20, which are all new packs, and still at the original price of $225 for a pack of three wagons. Kizula Hobbies released their much anticipated Z12 locomotives, and we got to have a close look at them. Kizula have said that the first part of the Z12 shipment has arrived, and has been given to Australia Post to deliver by the end of January. So at the time of recording this, not all the numbers are available for sale just yet. And they are waiting for the second shipment to arrive around the end of February. Now these are another beautiful release from Kizula of this very intricately detailed model. There are 14 different options available in a variety of colors depending on detailing types. They are also factory fitted with DCC sound and these are the next 18 ESU decoders. So they can also be run on DC with no issues. Now these look to be a fantastic follow-up to the previous Z19 and I hope they prove to be popular as the level of manufacturing coming from Kizula seems to be of quite a high standard both aesthetically and mechanically. These are priced at $895 and are available in store or directly from their website with postage at no extra cost. Shaky Wagon Works have had a new release for the month, the KNS Freighters 40 foot taut line kit to go with their 20 foot versions. There is also a toll 48 foot box available net too. All 40 and 48 foot container kits require paint to be completed and they are priced at $22 for a two pack plus postage. They are currently working on decal options for the toll distribution and toll SPD 40 foot taut liners to be here in around six weeks. Trainworld in Melbourne received their Y-Class painted samples at the end of January, and I popped over to Brighton to take a closer look at them. Now it should be noted that these are pre-production samples and that they will be updated. In particular, the yellow banding and dome will be brass as per prototype, and some small adjustments still need to be made, like the printed number boards. However, aside from that, they are pretty much ready to go and are still on track for a 2024 release. And I must say, they are certainly looking good with some fantastic detail, including locomotive controls, separately applied parts like grab irons and pipework. The six different options will represent the locomotives throughout their lives, with different roofs, cow catchers, and parts fitted. For example, Y421 will have no cow catcher and no auto coupler fitted, but will have a flare top tender. Y106 is as it was in the 1950s, with shunter steps and a riveted tender, as well as Y108 as it sits in the Newport Museum and steam rails Y112, as it can be seen in preservation post 2010, with straight sides, welded tender with alterations, compensated springs, and a modified cow catcher and auto couplers. Now some things are to be noted about this release. The locomotive and tender come permanently attached together, so there will be no messing around with plugs and fittings. There will also be a small keep alive fitted to these for better running quality over dirty track. Now these do come in DC and sound fitted, with DCC sounds sound recorded from Y112. They will also come with speakers fitted to the DC model. So if you do want to upgrade to DCC later, you very easily can. Now these are of course still available for pre-order, priced at $750 for a DC model and $850 for the DCC and sound fitted. And there is online pre-orders available on the Trainworld website, which is great to see. Or if that's not for you, you can call and place an order over the phone. And I'd say if you're thinking about getting one, I'd probably move pretty quickly, as these look like they're going to be a very popular release. I think they've done an absolutely outstanding job. Magna Rail Oz will be releasing their new tandem cyclists at the Diamond Valley Exhibition in Easter. At this stage they don't have a price, but they will say that the price will be advertised and should come in around $80, depending on the dollar to euro conversion rate. They said that the innovations on the V2 are a new frame made from an alloy copper, nickel and zinc, which is thinner and more rigid than brass. A new design on the tandem frame and an improved position for the riders as they were too high on the old version. Improved pedaling thanks to the new opening in the frame to guide the transparent wheel. And with that, the frame no longer rests on the wheel. The result is a total absence of shaking or vibration during pedaling. 
Along the track, models have added a new building to their ever-expanding range, the Kreuz Station in HO and N scale. The Kreuz Station building, including ticket office and toilet block, is a kit inspired by the Kreuz Station building. This kit also includes glazing and water tanks. The kit costs $90 in either HO or N scale. And for plonk and play, which is painted and assembled, it is an additional $100. The station was built in 1907 and closed in 1977. It was built in red brick with a basalt block foundation layer. And this is a good example of a Victorian country junction station. The kit, including the toilet block, in HO scale measures 307 wide, 134 deep, and 104 millimeters high approximately. This kit is printed in PLA plastic and you can use super glue, polystyrene cement, or PVA to put the kit together. Although some finishing parts is required. Postage is at an additional $10 and they do post anywhere in Australia. If you do want to get in contact with them, send them an email. During this month, I popped along to the Toy Fair and we got a look at the new model from Australian Railway Models. This will be a variant on their previous release of the New South Wales 55 class, but this time it's an oil burning version. So it would appear that the main locomotive has remained the same. However, the tender is now, well, an oil burning model. This is set for a mid-year release, and going off reports from the coal-burning models, it's now sold out. So if any retailers have them, they are the last ones. Along with that at the Toy Fair, Road Rages also have now four new buses in HO scale. The 1959 Bedford buses in Ventura, St. James College, Saunters, and Melbourne Grammar liveries priced at $69. As well as that, they also had some new cars with caravans, and these will be available in a number of hobby and model train shops. This month, Paul's 3D has a lot of new releases in anticipation of the Diamond Creek Model Railway Exhibition. The new models from Paul's 3D, which will be available at Easter, goes as following. A coal stage that can be found around the Victorian railways back in the time of steam. This kit has a coal stage and four separate legs. A new pedestrian bridge, a two-stand shearing shed, the Victorian Railways Beaufort drive through Goods Shed. And this is based on the shed at Beaufort and will be available with platforms around the shed as well. A new version of the Chilton Railway Station, a very small station, and this is another portable version of the Victorian Railway Stations. As well as that, he'll also be releasing platform edging at the show, as well as a new version of VQOF Flatwagon. He will also be re-releasing the L and LL sheet wagons and the new release produced using the Bolab printer with a 0.2mm nozzle that will enable the sheet wagons to have a bar size of just 0.22mm in width. To go along with these new sheet wagons, they will also be releasing the add-on kit for internal floors and sheep to go in these wagons. As well as that, he'll also have the Overland cars that Paula created but never officially launched. The Overland cars available are power car, baggage car, first class seating AJ car, second class BJ sitting car, the second class RBJ seating and food car, club car and sleeping cars. The kits come with an underframe, body and bogey side frames. They are also working on interiors for the Overland cars and have started with the interior for the AJ, BJ and RBJ cars. They will also be making the modified version to fit inside the Lima Overland cars. Jared from Buckenbull Model Trains is very excited to announce his first manufactured product, N-Scale Metal Wheel Sets. Getting a hold of N-Scale Metal Wheel Sets in Australia for over the years has proven to be very difficult, if not impossible, with many modelers, including Jared, turning to dealers and companies in the US to source them. Buckenbull Models, a new offshoot, aims to solve this issue for N-Scalers in Australia with Micro Trains compatible 33 and 36 inch metal wheel sets now available in bulk packs of 100. This first run has already proven to be quite popular. Make sure you get an order over soon to avoid missing out. Although future runs are planned. 
to order, head over to Buck and Bull Model Trains website or feel free to contact Jared via phone, email or Facebook. Modelers Warehouse is proud to announce that they are taking limited orders of the ready-to-run versions of the Spirit of the Outback in HO and HO N3.5. These models will be made to order and come with their very own secure box with room for your locos. To order a set of these, head over to their website. Now they did add that if you have ordered a kit version and haven't received it yet, to rest assured that they're coming. The popularity of these models has surpassed expectations and has drawn out the delivery times. Based on the current production capacities, it's estimated that outstanding kits will be dispatched over the next 14 days. So news from SDS Models, who during the month sent us for the production models of the upcoming South Australian Railways 8300 Guards vans, and I must say they are looking very nice. There will be 11 of these models available, representing them from the 1950s to their withdrawal in the 1980s. Those being in South Australian Railways and Commonwealth Railways Red, A&R White, and my favourite, the Australian National Green and Yellow. They're looking well detailed with grab rails, door handles, and nice clear printing. And they roll incredibly well, and personally, I can't wait to add one to one of my interstate jets. These are currently priced at $120 per van, with free postage over $300. And I'm sure that these will be available at many train and hobby shops, as well as directly from SDS at exhibitions. These have an estimated release at the end of March or early April. As well as that, during the month, they released the Pacific National Reconciliation Plan NR34. Now, much like their previous release of the NRs, these are precisely tool plastic bodies, ABS. They have genuine KD scale head whisker couplers, separately applied handrails and detail parts, five pole skew wound electric motors and dual flywheels. They have an all wheel electrical pickup, LED headlights and marker lights, number boxes and ditch lights. All models come with a standard MTC 21 pin motherboard. And for the DCC models, they have exclusive sound by DCC Sound. But of course, the unique feature of this very limited release model is the indigenous art, which looks excellent and accurately represents the prototype locomotive. Now these are priced at $345 for a DC or $495 for DCC and sound. They will be available from SDS stockists as well as directly from them at exhibitions. It should also be noted that they have no intention of rerunning these after they sell out. Although it was covered in last month's news, Ascision released what seems to have been a very popular rerun and new numbers of the C43 and C44 ACIs. And we managed to have a quick look at these models that belong to members of the AMRA Club in Melbourne. Now these models have the usual features, like five pole skew wound motors with twin brass flywheels, their all wheel drive and electric pickup. They have a heavy die car chassis, a PCB board with 21 pin DCC sockets, they are sound ready with Vandersound speaker enclosures, operating LED headlights, flashing dish lights, number box lights and red and white marker lights, operating fuel gauge light, scale sized metal knuckle couplers, etched brass details including windscreen wipers, side mirrors, lifting rings along with seat through roof fan and vent grills, metal wire grab irons, POM plastic side handrails for durability, detailed cab interior with painted driver figures, scale size air and MU hoses, sanding pipe details, under chassis piping details, plastic body and main parts. They have blackened metal wheels, which are RP25 110s, brass air horns, highly detailed bogies with separately applied factory fitted parts. They are of course factory painted and decorated with laser sharp printing, including cab windscreen blinds. There are five different body versions tooled with three different bogie types. There are 23 liveries and versions available and feature over 350 separate parts to make up each model. Now coming in hot are the Overland samples, which were posted on Facebook and can be seen in store at Australian Modeler. Now Ascision said via social media that their factory posted out some of the samples just before Chinese New Year holidays started and that they were quite excited to see that some of their Overland passenger car painted samples were included in this package. Adding that the Overland is a massive project that they've been working on with many different body variations, livery combinations, making up all the cars that they have to offer. A couple of sample corrections need to be made in early March when their factory is back on deck, and then the models can go into production. At this stage, they are looking for a mid-year delivery, adding that there is a huge backlog of models at their factory working through since factory shutdowns and staff shortages thereafter. The pre-orders will end in the coming months, so you do need to get your order in quickly to take advantage of their pre-order pricing and to lock in the model of your choice. 
In a general update, though nothing official from Ascision, they have updated their website with some, well, interesting adjustments. We now have them in order of future releases, pre-order, in stock, and right down the bottom, archived. Some notable updates are wall art for the GT46s and N-Scale 80 classes, as well as an A-Class rerun with a very interesting SSR A70, which at the time of recording this is not actually painted like that. But I guess we'll wait and see. They've also added the 42 GM S 49 and 44 class Mark II and Mark III to go with the previously released Mark I's, which I covered in another video, although none of these have any release dates or extra information. Now, Ascision did say on Instagram that they've been working on the GM S and 42s, although it is interesting to note a couple of key differences in designs here. The GM and S seem to have the art from the SSR website, whereas the others are model samples. So it does leave some questions on how far into this project they are. They did say on their Instagram that they are scanning locomotives with the ARTEC 3D scanner, so they will have the most accurate noses on these iconic locomotives. They said that this is going to take a long time, so further details will be available when they are officially announced. As well as that, seeing that they updated their website, it would have been great to see pre-orders move to online rather than the mail away order form. It would seem obvious that a lot of people missed out, for example, the Cube C44s. And I think that if they had had a safe and secure online pre-order system like other manufacturers, this would have been advantageous to all involved. And I see these sentiments echoed online after most releases. And the last one is a bit of fun. The Picnic Train has released a PHG portable power bank saying that if you've ever wondered what the little train carriage is at the back of their trains, it's called the PHG and it supplies the entire train with power to run the lights, heaters and fridges in the buffet car. It's an ex-New South Wales Government Railways Guards van that has been converted for use on their heritage trains. The specs on this power bank, it is a 2600 milliamp hour rechargeable power bank, comes with USB-A to lightning, C and micro USB cables for, well, all your charging needs. And it's now available on their website at the cost of 30 bucks and I think that is a great way to support a heritage organisation. Now, in my own news, the Victorian Railways beanies are back and they will be on my website until the 8th of March, at which point I will be taking down the web store until after the Diamond Creek exhibition. As I'll be away for the majority of March at events and exhibitions. As well as that, I'll also have a very new limited edition Ride beanie, which will be available at the Diamond Creek exhibition. Now, I didn't get that many made, so if you do want one, we'll see you at Diamond Creek. As well as that, I will have a lot of videos on the way, which will be Sandown, Kyneton, Newport Railway Workshops, Open Day, the Canberra Model Railway Exhibition, and of course, Diamond Creek. So if you do want to see those videos early and support the production of these videos, don't forget to check out my Patreon. Now let's take a look at all the currently announced exhibitions, open days and conventions happening throughout 2024 and 2025. On the 2nd and 3rd of March, the North Shore Railway Modellers will be holding their annual exhibition at the Forestville Memorial Halls in Sydney. The Logan and District Model Railway Club in Queensland will be holding an open day on the 3rd of March. Over the Labor Day long weekend in Melbourne, the biannual Newport Railway Workshops Open Day will be on again. And not just featuring one-to-one -one scale trains this year, we'll also have model railways. So stay tuned for more information. On March 9 in Sydney, the SCRMA seminar about Sydney Electric Railways will be on again on March 9. The Macedon Rangers Model Railway Club will hold the Model Railway Craft and Hobby Exhibition on the March Labor Day weekend in Kyneton, Victoria. In Melbourne on the 16th and 17th of March, the Train and Hobby Show will be on again at Sandown Racecourse. In New South Wales on the 17th of March, the Newcastle Model Railway Club will hold their annual open day from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. The Canberra Model Train Show will be happening on the 23rd and 24th of March at the UC High School, Kayleen. The 2024 Easter Model Train Show will be happening on March 30th and 31st at the Community Bank Stadium, Diamond Creek, just out of Melbourne. And I hope to see lots of you there. As well as that, on the Easter long weekend in Victoria, the Bendigo Model Railroaders will be holding their Easter Model Railway exhibition just outside of Bendigo. The Gold Coast Model Railway Club will hold an open day on April 6th at their club rooms in Arundale. 
The National N-Scale Convention will be happening in Wangaratta, Victoria from May 31st to June 2nd, with tickets now available. The dates have now been confirmed for the 2024 AMRA West Australia exhibition as June 22nd and 23rd in 2024 at the Claremont Showgrounds in the Silver Jubilee Pavilion. A not to be missed event is the Rose Hill exhibition happening on the 4th and 5th of May in 2024 in Sydney. This is, as I always say, if you're going to attend one exhibition a year, it's definitely the Rose Hill exhibition. In Queensland, on the 4th and 5th of May, the 46th annual Brisbane Model Train Show will be happening at, at the Brisbane Showgrounds. Over the 18th and 19th of May, the Murray Railway Models will be holding their annual Model Railway exhibition in Albury, New South Wales. In Adelaide, over the King's Birthday Long Weekend, the 2024 Adelaide Model Railway exhibition will be back on again at the Greyhound Park in Adelaide, and I hope to see lots of you there. As well as that, in Melbourne, on the Saturday through to the Monday, the Waverley Model Railway Exhibition will be happening at the Brandon Park Community Centre. The Grampians Model Railroad is incorporated will hold their annual exhibition in the regional town of Stall. Melbourne's biggest and best dedicated model railway show will be on again on Saturday the 3rd and Sunday the 4th of August at the Melbourne Showgrounds, so stay tuned for more information coming soon. In Melbourne, on the 3rd and 4th of August, the Sunshine Model Railway Club will be holding their annual exhibition in Braybrook. Modelling the Railways of South Australia Convention will be back on again on the 7th of September in Adelaide. The Sunbury Model Railway Club's Model Train Show will be happening on October 19th and 20th at the St Anne's Church Hall in Sunbury, Victoria. In Port Augusta, South Australia, the Port Augusta Model Engineers will be holding their annual Interim Club running event with the Sunday being open to the public. A new exhibition to be held in Goulburn, New South Wales will happen on September 7th and 8th with more details to come. The Logan and District Model Railway Club will be holding an open day on the 27th of October. In 2025 in Victoria, the Warrnambool Model Railway Club will be holding their annual exhibition on January 11th and 12th. The Phillip Island and District Model Railway Club will hold their annual model train show in Cowes, Victoria on Phillip Island. Now, as usual, if you are in a model railway club and you're having an event, don't forget you can just reach out to me and I will happily add it to the news. Now, last month's competition winners for the Newport Railway Workshops Open Day are Keith De Souza, Dennis Bailey, and John Holmes Frame. Uh, congratulations to the winners. They have been contacted via email and we'll see you at the open day. This month's competition is from Trackside Models. It is for the HO Scale Corner Shop. If you do want to win one of these, all you have to do is head over to my website, answer one question, and the winner will be announced in next month's news. If you don't fancy your chances of winning one of these, you can check out Trackside Models, who will be here in Melbourne at the Diamond Creek Exhibition, which you can find out all about now. Over the weekend of the 30th to 31st of March, the Yarra Valley Model Railway Club's annual Easter Model Railway Exhibition will be held at the Community Bank Stadium, Diamond Creek. And this is everything you need to know if you're planning on attending this exhibition. This year we'll see over 20 excellent model railway layouts like English layout, Crosby Stevens, fictional layout, Armstrong Station, the amazing N-scale layout, Railways of Japan, Micro Madness who demonstrates model railways you can build in a small space, English O-scale layout, Darabi, as well as the Melbourne L-Gage Train Club and Legoland History. Melbourne Corporation Markets in O-scale and the first outing of the New South Wales HO-scale layout Dungog since undergoing restoration, as well as many more in different eras, scales and prototypes. To complement these layouts, there will be more than 25 traders and manufacturers like SDS Models, Scale Workshops, Train World, Railway Coins, Paul's 3D, Along the Tracks, IDR Models, Barry's Boxes, Trackside Models, Jonas Creations, Broad Gauge Models, Roundhouse Models, Eurotrain Hobbies, Blue and Gold Models, as well as Secondhand Traders and more. I'll also be there with my trade stand and new layout concept, Freemo 9. Now getting there is easy as the Diamond Creek Community Stadium is about a 40 minute drive from Melbourne and has ample free parking at the venue and surrounding areas. As well as that, it also has easy access to public transport, being about a five minute walk from the Diamond Creek Railway Station on the Hurst Bridge Line. And it's also close to a number of bus stops in the area. But of course, do check with the PTV app closer to the event for any changes. Now the exhibition is running from 9.30 to five on Saturday and 10 to four on Sunday. And 
Entry is priced at $15 for adults, $5 for children, and $30 for a family, with cash or FPOS options at the door. If you do want to find out more about the club or keep up to date with everything going on, please head over to the Easter Model Train Expo social media and events page. As always, these exhibitions are a great way to get inspired or find out more about this great hobby, or maybe even an opportunity to catch up with some friends and see some great model railways. So we hope to see lots of you at the 2024 Easter Model Railway Exhibition. And don't forget to share this with anyone you think would be interested in attending. And I'll see you all at the show. Hooroo! So there we go, that's all the news, announcements and updates that have happened throughout February and lots of very exciting things coming throughout March and well, for the rest of the year. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all, well, in a lot of different places throughout March and uh, otherwise next month. Anyway, thanks for watching, see you soon. Hooroo!